One of the, uh, uh, the main targets for this demonstration is we're going to uh, demonstrate navigation, demonstrate capable navigation. Uh, solar sails have been used before and they've flown before, but what we offer uh, is something that a mission planner could then pick off a shelf and you say, hey, that's a technology that would work for flying my instrument, right? Uh, the solar sails have only, that have flown before have only been, uh, you know, to demonstrate the concept of solar thrust and solar propulsion. But what, we, what we're what we aiming to do is take that in the next step and go into navigation and actually fly to some place useful that only a solar sail can do. We have uh, a radiation pressure and then we have solar wind. What we're going to use is the radiation pressure. This is a phenomenal phenomenon in which a, a photon, which is massless but still has momentum, reacts with the surface and then bounces back off. Uh, it creates a very tiny, tiny pressure, but it is a pressure nonetheless, and once we're in the, uh, uh, the weightlessness of space, any pressure will turn into, a, you know, turn into a force, and F equals MA will get a small acceleration. So what the solar sail consists of is a great giant area of reflective material that's capturing all of that solar pressure and using it to impart an acceleration on a small craft. So what we're targeting for this program is a solar sail with an area of roughly 1,200 square meters. So we're in the neighborhood of about a quarter of a football field, if you will. With that, uh, we'll create roughly one gram of thrust. So it's, it's very low, right? It's equivalent to the, uh, the weight of a, a pink sweet and low sugar packet. But what we can do with that is if we're careful, we can integrate that thrust over a very long period of time and we can do some useful navigation with it. The solar flares from the sun obviously wreak havoc or can wreak havoc on the satellites and even the power grid on the earth. So uh, what NOAA offers to operators and to the power grid operators is advanced warning through the means of this satellite that they have positioned at L1, which is a Lagrange point in between Earth and the Sun. Uh, they offer this advanced warning as a result of the data they get from the satellite called ACE. Uh, now that's at L1. Now what the solar sail could offer and this is one of the areas that we want to we want to fly to uh, is that we could create a pseudo Lagrange point that's farther in towards the Sun than L1. We'd actually double the distance from the Earth as ACE is. So if they have X minutes of warning time from ACE we could double that and we could offer uh, you know offer satellite operators and power grid operators twice the warning time. Uh, the Lagrange point exists because uh, uh, this earth is pulling on it, the sun's pulling on it, and there's some, some uh, a centripetal force that's you know swinging out away from the sun too. So it's the, it's the amalgamation of those three forces that create that gravitationally neutral point. Now we're going to offset some of that sun's gravity with that one gram of, of, uh, of thrust and we can fly a little closer to the sun and create that extra neutral point there and we'll be a little farther in. We last built a solar sail, uh, the one that was deployed in the Plumbrook chamber there in 2004-2005 uh, is when we assembled it. I think the test was in 2005. So our, our first goal is to, to revitalize that. Uh, this is no, no mean feat to create something that gossamer and, and controllably deploy it. Our, our flight right now, uh, we're scheduling somewhere in the, uh, the fourth quarter of 2014. Now the flight is supposed to be on a, uh, a secondary Falcon 9 uh, GTO launch, hopefully. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Uh, you know, we would take any other secondary flight we can get, but the, uh, the GTO launch offers us some, some unique, uh, unique capabilities uh, for, for the demonstration.